my brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the Most High God. Some of you have read this before, but I'm going to read it to you. Look through the eyes of truth. Pause and think about if you need. Remember that you are created in truth, looking through the lenses of good and evil. This is what I told you I wanted to read to you in the last video. You will see with your spiritual eyes, even if we don't understand with our flesh. Born in innocence, corruption sets in. Every rule is abandoned by our own wants and needs. Now we fight for ourselves, regardless of others. A string of dirty deeds. The streets were paved with gold until our greed took over. Are we not called to be disciples of the one true God through faith, as we have willfully forgotten our bright-natured selves to have a hand in separating good and evil? Yet we are in the, we are in the process of drinking from the cup of darkness and not willing to put it down until it is empty. With those who believe in the words of our Savior Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, God indeed made flesh. We are called to perform His will on earth, in His name, unashamed, unafraid, with power in and of and through His great name, and profess of His many works in which He performed through His Father's name and for His Father, which is also our Father. Blessed are those who work in the name of our Almighty Holy Father in Heaven. Not our works, but His and His alone. In His work are all things made, and it is our gift to do His many works. Sickness sets in, but through the working hands of our Father, through our own hands, makes those well. Through the holy vessel of faith and willingness to reverence his or herself, that is you, being the working vessel of God. He is in you and will awaken in your life when we learn to step away from pridefulness and accept him who resides in us. Why is it that the great name of Jesus has been trampled upon, dragged through the mud, ridiculed, made fun of, twisted, denied, blasphemed, hated, manipulated, corrupted, on and on and on, because He is the truth. He and the Father, the Creator, the Giver of all things, truth, holy, sacred, the invisible and visible coming together, they are one and the same. The wicked don't want you to see the truth, only the lies. We are reaching a time in history where those who believe on the Lord Jesus and God and everything sacred are being demonized. Those who believe are being slaughtered, beaten, mocked, ridiculed, and made to look as if we are the problems in this world, as if we are terrorists and haters of humanity. God's words have echoed throughout time, warning us of these days. In most countries around the world, it is illegal to speak the words of our Savior Messiah and even saying His great name, Jesus. Why? Because He is the way, the truth, and the life. The evil of and in the world are trying to uproot the teachings of Jesus, His truth, and His life and in the process steal from you your eternal birthright as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Yet, they do not understand that in their defiance they ring in the King of Glory. In their acts of disobedience they unknowingly sound the trumpet for revival. In their acts of misleading our innocence they in turn bring on the Redeemer. In their intoxication of pridefulness and self-centeredness, they have unleashed their own condemnation into utter darkness and severed the thread that was once ultimately holding them to life. 
Is it that hard to accept we are imperfect in this body and unable to climb the mountain leading to heaven alone? We are in need of a guide, someone who knows the way, someone who paved and paid the way with his own righteous blood and provided his examples for us to follow. His grace and love are so unimaginable that in his examples to live by, he himself came to do it for us. And all we need to do is believe, trust, and have faith. Jesus, the only begotten Son, the light of the world, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, God made flesh. The age of the old vision has passed away, and the birth of a new way has begun, as our God, our Holy Father, made his entrance into this world, to take the sins of all who reside on the earth, to wash his children clean through the purity of his blood and covenant, a promise proclaimed from the beginning. So he created and weaved the fabric of time and space and matter into our physical reality, giving us one life, one experience, one confrontation in a world where every man and woman would be presented with a choice, having an outcome of your own personal desire, that personal desire to choose life or death. In him is life, and to deny is death. It seems frightening, but look, we are here by our own choice and have willingly forgotten our bright-natured selves, all because of what the wicked one has done. God, through his mercy and love, has given us this life that says to us, If choosing life, this is the closest to death you will come. And if you choose death, this is the closest to life you will come. Our own choice and choosing life is through Jesus and Jesus alone. Through Adam and Eve, their fall, they lost their innocence. They were innocent and unaware of deceit, trickery, lying, and unaware of even a possibility of a separation from God, a rebellion against God, because that's all they knew. Like children in their innocence, we are born innocent into a world of negativity, introduced to lies and deception, just like Adam and Eve in the garden, being confronted with the serpent and his deceitful tongue. We are all born through Adam and Eve's fall for the opportunity to distinguish between good and evil for ourselves in this reality and duality, the war between light and darkness, there is good and evil that God said, do not eat from this tree. And there is truth that Adam and Eve were created in. This is the image of God, truth. The light is found in the one named King of Kings, Lord of Lords, whose one name was given power and authority. The name above all names, Jesus, Messiah, Son of God, the Suffering Servant, the Redeemer of all humanity. Believe on Him. Call, call Him into your heart and make Him a part of your life. Jesus is the immaculate and eternal embodiment of God the Father, the invisible made visible. Some of the things I, I wanted to make clear about why all of the churches and religious groups are so confusing, it is because they have stepped away from the truth and subject their own ideas and promoted their own opinions and agendas to get people to reach their outcomes in which we should, in which, in which we should believe in, which is taking away the truth and getting us to not even believe anymore. These establishments have commercialized and sold their interpretation of religion and stacked lie upon lie on top of the truth to confuse us into disbelief, eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And those who want the truth but are unwilling to seek for themselves 
for lack of even knowing better, get force-fed the lies and deception. It doesn't mean that's what they want. It's just people believe churches and governments are telling them the truth. Why would this be? They want power and control. We have been programmed from birth and it started at the very beginning. We are not looking for religion. We seek a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Not only those reasons, but many more, such as two bloodlines, one worshiping their father, which is the serpent, the other following Adam's bloodline leading to God's entrance into the world. The evil believes by corrupting the purity of man that it can destroy all the good God has made. God has extended his hand to all his creation that has fallen away from him. God has his signature written on your very DNA. He counts the hairs on your head daily. He has everyone's name engraved on his own hands. He gives us free will, a discerning heart. If we seek out what love really means, truth is revealed to us. God so loved the world, he sent his only son. Those who believe on him will find everlasting life. His righteous blood washes away our impurities. We receive a new garment that He prepares for us, bringing us into His kingdom. My senses will dull, my strength will fail, but my faith in the Lord will stand forever. Fortify your life with God. Build a strong foundation. Jesus took on the sins of the world with open arms. What we call suffering, He calls salvation. What we call free will with God's guidance, He calls wisdom. With charity and love, He calls life. Praise be to His name forever and ever. Next, Genesis chapter 1, going into Ezekiel. I'm going to try to show you something that I don't believe I've ever heard anyone talk about before, at least not in this way. All glory to our Father who is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you do for us. Thank you for leading us into all truth. I, I hope that you guys uh, liked some of the pictures. Some of them are pictures I've taken. Some of them are from um, brothers and sisters who sent these pictures. And this one that you're seeing right now, my son drew. And um, I just... I'm really happy to be able to share that with you guys. Jesus is the Sabbath, therefore rest in Him. He is your rest. He is your comfort. Just as Father and Son were reunited, so too also shall the body of Christ be reunited with our Father through the sun. My father, turn my heartache to happiness, my trials to treasures, emptiness to fullness, and my sorrows to salvation. Lead me in your ways and take my hand in yours. God bless you all, my brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I love hearing your messages and reading your comments. Have a great day.